Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Black Ink podcast slash internet show. This is episode number 53, and I'm your gracious host, Jake Kerr. I'd like to officially welcome you. Strap on your fucking seatbelt. Get ready. Make sure you've got a fucking open mind because we're about to blast off. I want to talk today about something that is... It's something that's pretty consistently on my mind. It's something that I notice within society that I maybe don't agree so much with. And it's just a fucking overwhelming sense of entitlement that everyone has these days. I feel like at the moment, and look, let let me be very clear in saying that I don't think that much of myself. You know what I mean? I think that's a very kind of healthy human habit to create in yourself is to not really put yourself up on too much of a pedestal. And I know... You're probably thinking like, Jake, I've listened to 52 of your podcasts. I know exactly what you think of yourself. I know that you think you, you know, you you literally call one of your podcasts baddest motherfucker. Okay. And look, that's confidence. Okay. That isn't me thinking a lot of myself. That is confidence in understanding the arena that I'm in and knowing exactly what I can achieve within that arena, which I think is fair, right? This is one of those things where if you're going to... I don't know, say you're a race car driver, okay? And your job is to race cars. You get to a certain point where you're gonna take particular risks on the racetrack in your car because you know a whole heap of things. You've been in enough races to know what the sort of environment is. You've you know, you've know, trained, you've raced in your car enough to know exactly how it responds. You know yourself well enough, so you go, right, within my arena of racing cars, I'm happy to take chances and risks because I know that I, I, I know the kind of the parameters of, of which I'm working within. Right, But I think there is a kind of general idea, there's like a general framework that we all have to live within. Right, I think there's a certain amount of uh, kind of common sense and a certain amount of information you have to bring into the public space, the community, right? So that when we're interacting with each other or we have to be around each other in whatever kind of forum it might be, you really have to abide by a set of rules that we all kind of silently agree on, right? And look, for sure I've touched on this in other podcasts, but I want to bring it up in a really particular light. And I have a really kind of blatantly obvious example of something that stresses me out beyond belief, right? So when I'm driving around out in the industrial area, now just as a bit of a back note, I love giving a little bit of context and history to what I'm talking about. So the industrial area here in, in Bunbury is called Halifax, and it's a place, well, there's Picton as well, but Halifax is the one that I'm going to talk about. Now... I'm very familiar with Halifax. I used to operate my coffee van out of Halifax for the best part of four or five hours every day, every weekday for about four years. It's a place that I know, you know, I've been down every single road hundreds, if not thousands of times. I have, I know a lot of the businesses there. I know a lot of the business owners. In fact, just this morning I was in Halifax and I was visiting a business owner. I went to another business that I wasn't even... I wasn't even going to that business to buy something off from. I was going there to utilize a car park. And we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. And they know me so well that they just saw my number plate and two blokes came out and said hello to me because they're like, oh, we haven't seen you in so long. That's how comfortable I am in Halifax. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even saying like people know me in Halifax. What I'm saying is I'm so familiar with the roads and all that out there. Now, another little bit of context is, as I've mentioned in other podcasts, I've been on the road my whole fucking life. Okay, I've been on the road, push bikes, trucks, motorbikes, cars, you name it. I've, I've fucking, I've done it. You know what I mean? I've done it. I appreciate enough of the road that I, I, I feel like I understand road etiquette. You know, I feel like I understand what the ins and outs and, you know, the rapid kind of decision making you have to make on the road, the things that you definitely have to do and the things that you definitely shouldn't do. You know, for example, if you're on a highway and, you know, and you know the difference between like a highway and a freeway. A freeway has no reason to stop. There's no traffic lights. There's no stoplights. There's no intersections. A freeway is something where you have on ramps and off ramps. But essentially, the idea of a freeway is to keep moving. The idea of a highway is it is a high speed road that has a need to stop every now and then, right? But the thing that a highway and a freeway have in common is typically they can have more than one lane. And if they do have more than one lane, let's just use a two lane example just to keep it simple. The left hand lane is for everyone, okay? The left hand lane, you can go fast, you can go slow, whatever permits in that left hand lane. The right hand lane specifically is for overtaking and merging traffic, right? So let's just say you're coming down the highway and there's two of you sitting next to each other in those lanes, one in the left hand, one in the right lane. The person in the left lane has to do nothing as long as they're doing the speed limit, and even if they want to sit five, 10 kilometers under the speed limit, which you know I fucking hate, but if they want to do that, they're entitled to do that in the left-hand lane. But the right-hand lane 
If the person is sitting on the exact same speed as the person next to them, then not only does that cunt need a bullet, that person needs to get into the left-hand lane. Because that right-hand lane, you're allowed to be there as long as you're overtaking them or maybe you've just come onto the highway and you're getting up to speed, whatever it might be. But the simple fact is, you cannot sit next to someone if they're doing the same speed in the left-hand lane because then if someone comes up behind you and they want to pass, which they have every fucking right to do, especially if there's no one else on the road and we've just got two dickheads dueling it out for doing five kilometers under the limit, that person in the right-hand lane, it is their responsibility to move. It is their responsibility to move. That's really fucking important, right? So then you can understand if that person goes, oh, we're both sitting on 75 in an 80 zone. I'm just going to speed up to 80. So I'm not even recommending going over the speed limit, which the right hand lane, you know, between you and I, it actually is for that. That's what the right hand lane is for. It's for speeding. You want to overtake someone, they're sitting two kilometers under the limit and you want to do five Ks over. Fucking great. You pull into the right hand lane, you drop a gear, you hold your breath, you fucking take off. Then you slip back in that left lane when you're ready. And then what have you done? You've utilized the right-hand lane as it's meant to be. And then following that, you've got out of the right-hand lane just in case anybody else is in a similar situation that you were just in and they need to use it. You haven't just gone, oh, look, there's, there's another lane on the road. I think I might go sit over there for a bit, right? Because that's how fucking stupid you have to be that you adopt a British accent just to sit in the lane. You understand? So another example. You're both sitting, you're both, you know, one person sitting in the left hand lane and the other person sitting in the right hand lane, right? And you see about six, uh, let's say 400 meters up ahead, a car has come to an intersection. You're sitting on 100 kilometers per hour, 400 meters ahead, two of you side by side doing 100 kilometers per hour. That person doesn't have time to pull out in front of you and get up to speed in time, okay? Now get this. If you're in the right-hand lane, this is going to literally blow some people's minds. They're not going to think that they're allowed to do this much thinking without someone giving them permission beforehand. But if you're in the right-hand lane, you're actually allowed, right? Stick with me, person entering from the right. You're in the right-hand lane. There's a car next to you. You're allowed to use your discretion and speed up a little bit if you're game and willing to break the law and be all cheeky and go 5Ks over the limit. Or maybe you can drop five kilometers per hour and then move into the left-hand lane. And you're probably thinking, Jake, what does that do? I can't possibly imagine what that does. We'll see that opens up the right-hand lane and that person who's way up there in the car waiting to come to the thing goes, oh, thanks buddy. And then pulls into that right-hand lane because now it's free and they use it to get up to speed. And then what do they do when they get up to speed? Come on, everyone say it together. They move into the left-hand lane. Right, So now you can see that the right hand lane is still free. Maybe by this time you want to overtake these two because they're not sitting on the speed limit you want, whatever it might be. The point is the right hand lane is free, right? But no, no, that's not what people do, okay? Let me explain to you. Let me elaborate on how far people go the other way, right? So they'll be in the right hand lane. They'll see that car and they're like, yeah, I'm in the right hand lane. What the fuck do you want me to do about it? There's one option here and it's stay in the right hand lane. This fucking idiot should have left, left for work five minutes earlier. So he didn't have to see me in the right hand lane. It's their fault, not mine. Right? So either that happens and like, trust me, I'm always the person who's in that car up there when that fuckhead is sitting in the 200 series Land Cruiser thinking like, I spent a hundred grand on a car. I shouldn't have to move anywhere, anytime. I am the king. Right? Or it's the other way around. Maybe the person in the right-hand lane moves into the left-hand lane and then the person up here is lacking the IQ points to realize that that's happened for them and now there's a completely open lane and they can just pull out and it's all safe and all good and they still wait for both cars now fucking top to tail go past and they're just like, hmm, I wonder why he swapped lanes to go behind that car and then they just end up pulling out to the left-hand lane anyway. That's fucking where we're at, right? That's 2021 in a nutshell, you know? And trust me, trust me, if that situation happens and that person way up there that I'm talking about is in a truck, especially if they've got a double or fucking heaven forbid a triple and you've just made space for them, you've said, hey, I know it's fucking really because this is a thing that a lot of people don't know because people aren't exposed to trucks and truck drivers. The only time they're exposed to trucks is when they're parked next to one at the lights and they're being all scared because it's so big and they don't want to get too close. That's most people. Like, I know I've been a truck driver and I've seen how people react around trucks. They're one of two things. They're way too confident or way too scared. They never just appreciate that. It's like, yep, vehicle just like yours weighs about a hundred times what yours does and it takes ages to speed up and fucking even longer to slow down. Most people have no idea that that's the basics that you need to know about a truck, right? So if you see a truck way up yonder and there's no one else around you and you're in the left, you're in the right hand lane, someone's in the left hand lane, 
please move over because that truck would really appreciate Because this is a thing, like you go, oh, he's only got to wait 30 seconds. Trust me, he's probably been waiting for five minutes already. And the next intersection he goes to, he has to wait another fucking five minutes and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one. So anything that you can ever do to allow room or time for a truck, do that. Okay? So if you're coming up to a set of lights and you notice this truck has nobody in front of them, nobody in front of them, but everyone's in the left-hand lane, that doesn't mean pull out in front of the truck. Okay? Because what happens is... You pull out in front of the truck and that truck driver knows how much space he needs to slow his truck down, especially if he's got a load on, right? So before you even take into account how much the truck weighs or the trailer weighs, he could have 60 ton of product, okay? Now to give you an idea, for you to move one ton of dirt with a shovel would take you the best part of your will and a day, right? Do you understand? And he's got 60 ton and that truck is trying to slow that bitch down before he gets to the point that he's got to stop. So if no one's in front of him, he's going, great, I've got all of this room. I'm going to use all of that room. But then you decide to pull in at the last minute because you're like, no, I'm more important. I've got a 200 series Land Cruiser. I need to go there now. Then all that happens is, the, the, the reality is, he has to pull himself up even further now. So instead of just being able to rely on his gearbox and play a little bit with the brake, he has to hurt that brake, maybe even use a trailer brake, whatever it might be, just to get that truck pulled up in time. So there's one of two options, and usually it's a second option in that he just used heaps more brake than what he should have to and pulls it up, or the less likely but also the more fatal option is that he just fucking hits you because he's got nowhere to go. Because you've got to think, you've got a truck, a trailer, a dolly, and a trailer. As soon as you start thinking about swerving over here or swerving over there, you're going to do so much more damage than just wiping out that car in front of you. So you've got to think, if you pull in front of a truck and you get hit, that's on you, right? Now, I've got too far down the rabbit hole of like people not understanding how roads and ships work. Let's go back to the industrial era I was talking about, Halifax. And this is something that I, like, every time I go out to Halifax, I see this, right? And... The, the fucking annoying part is it's not even a similar demographic who do it every time. It's just like a, it's something that seems to happen so regularly that like I, I, I question how people live the rest of their life if they do shit like this, you know? So you'll be driving around and then someone is just, and the thing is like the roads are nice and wide. And do you know why the roads are nice and wide? Because it's an industrial area. And you know what goes in industrial areas? Typically trucks. Right? There's a lot of fucking receiving and dispatch and all the rest with trucks. There's a lot of uh, transport yards. There's a lot of places that service transport yards and service the transport industry. Therefore, they have these nice big roads so that trucks have plenty of room to be able to swing, get their double trailer around, whatever it might be. Right? But for some reason, some city slicking, pen pushing pieces of shit seem to think that this wide road is just extra room for them to pull their car up, not, not on the side of the road or the verge, but have their tire meet the fucking curb, right? So they've got a hole, like basically where someone will be driving the left-hand side of the road, they'll just pull up and be like, oh, sorry, I just need to take a call or I need to check my messages. But you're on the road. <coughs> Louie, come here. <coughs> Louie, 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 hey. Louie, hey, Louie. Louie, Louie, hey buddy, just give me one second. Buddy, hey, what are you doing? Sit on your seat, go on. Ah. My apologies. You're on the road. That's what's going on. You just pulled up on the road. And even though this is an industrial area and it's all at 50 kilometers per hour because it's all built up, nobody is anticipating that a car is stopped on the side of the road, okay? And especially without their hazard lights on, especially without some sort of indication that maybe they're broken down, maybe, I mean, if you need to pull up on the side of the road because your car just fucking broke down and you're, the, at least the bonnet is up or the fucking hazard lights are on and you're standing out the front looking like, fuck, you know, my car's broken sort of thing. No one's anticipating that you're pulling up to check your fucking Instagram. Do you understand? And furthermore, get this, get this. Did you know there is nowhere in Halifax, there is no road there, there is no single fucking cubic meter that you could stand in and not have eyesight at a car park. You are surrounded by car parks, right? Let's go back to where I was fucking 10 minutes ago and I said I pulled up in a car park because I needed to reply to some messages. Do you know why I pulled up in a car park? Because I needed to park my car to do so. 
It's in the name. Car park, park my car, you know? So I didn't park my car on the side of the road where, where, where cars drive because I run the risk of maybe a, a learner truck driver not anticipating or, you know, maybe just freaking out and forgetting what to do with their gearbox and the brakes and all the rest and just accidentally running into my car and killing me, you know? I don't run the risk of like just people fucking absentmindedly going like, oh yeah, that car's doing a, that car's ahead of me sort of thing. Like obviously they're doing 50 Ks an hour or 40 at least because they're driving their car and they look over to one second, look back, bang. I don't run the risk of any of that because I'm in a car park where people anticipate that my car is dead still even potentially turned off until the point that I wanna leave the car park and even then I'm moving at a reasonably slow pace. See how all of this seems like really obvious when I say it, right? But I cannot go out to Halifax without experiencing some fucking halfwit pretending like they're entitled to park on the side of the road. What, because they are in a car, like literally. Like the, it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I know, I know what you're saying right now. You're like, Jake, you're too passionate. Okay. You're too emotional about this, but I'm emotional about this because I've seen it every time I've been out there for about fucking eight years. And you know, like, man, every, uh, it's always, it's always someone who like, you look through the window and it's like, this is a special experience for you coming out to the industrial area, isn't it? You're out, you're out visiting the fucking real, uh, the real, the real men who get fucking oil under dirt under their fingernails and they go home with oil in their fucking on their hands and shit. Like this is you think because you're around all such big machinery and all the rest, you can just pull over and go like, oh yeah, it's fucking. That's what we do out here in the industrial area. She's all pretty rough around here, you know. But the reality is, you're a fuckhead, right? Really lock that in. Maybe even write that down just in case you forget. So next time you pull up in the industrial area, you're like, I wonder why I've got fuck. Oh, I'm not meant to park on the road. This is a ro- this is where this is where cars drive. I need to keep my car moving if I'm on the road, right? Because to me, right? To me, this is no different. If you're on the main street and you just like you you're not even at a roundabout or fuck all, you're on the main street, you're doing 50, and you just like pull up, stop, put the handbrake on, get your phone out, and you start scrolling. That is the exact same thing. That's the same thing, right? You're in a place where there's meant to be constant fucking traffic and you've just stopped. And I know you think it's important because you've got to check your emails, you got to check your messages. Literally, none of it fucking matters unless you're having a heart attack or the fucking head has just blown in your car. There is no reason you should be stopped on the road, ever, okay? And I think this comes down to a point of like, it's funny, I was talking and I was talking to, I was talking to, a friend who owns, I mean, you guys can piece this together. I was talking to a friend who owns a cafe and he's telling me that people nowadays like go into his cafe and they pick essentially elements of the menu. They pick the things, the bits and pieces that they want and then they build their own meal, okay? Never do that. You are not entitled to do that, right? Ever. You shouldn't like... Honestly, I get upset when when like I ask to add sauce added to my burger when I go to KFC and McDonald's and all the rest because real fucking basically, do you think the 10 million people who got a Big Mac, Big Mac before you didn't have it figured out? Do you think that extra sauce is really essential to the point you're going to add it to the order right now? I can't imagine the sort of fucking entitlement someone has to have going like, oh, hey, can I get the avocado toast, but can I get a side of porridge as well, please? And can you please put some slices of bacon on the porridge? And then can I have some warm orange juice and a ramekin on the side? Like, no, you can't. You can have the avocado on toast if you want. I tell you what, you can buy the porridge as a full meal as well. And I'll sell you a full glass of fucking orange juice, right? And I'll give you all of the cutlery and crockery to do whatever the fuck you want with it after that. But no, you cannot have a fraction of everything on the menu and piece it together and call it a meal because it works in your mind, right? And the part, whoa, the part that I also love is when people try and like break down. This is almost like a different point, but it's the same thing, right? And it's like when I was on the coffee van, the two things, the two things that people bring up all the time is the weather and like, does this thing make, make much money? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, you know, like, well, how much does it cost you to make a cup of coffee? Oh, I'm sorry. How much do you make before tax every year? Hey, sorry. Uh, sorry. Is, is your wife's nipples pierced? Or, or, what do you, how many, how many forks do you have in your cutlery drawer? Hey, Do you know what all those questions have in common with the question you asked me? It's got absolutely nothing to do with you, right? 
It's, it's, irre- it's irrelevant. It's personal. It's none of your business. It literally is none of your business. It's in the words. It's, again, it's like spelling, you know? It's none of your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I get that. But, but like at the end of the day, how much money would you profit? Whoa, again, again, bro. What the fuck are you asking? What are you asking? Do you want to know how much my phone bill is so you can figure out exactly how much money I have at the end? You want to know. So what you want to know is like, you know, it's always the same thing. How many cups do you sell? Um, and you work five days a week. Oh, do you ever do any shows? How much does it make? To- okay, okay, dude. You, how about I just, instead of saving you all the questions, it makes enough money for me to live. Is that enough information? Yeah, well, we've been thinking about doing it. No, you haven't been thinking about doing it, okay? You've masturbated with the idea of starting some sort of enterprise for yourself, but you haven't gone in deep enough to start writing business plans or asking the right questions to the right... Don't ask someone in the middle of the day of the job they're doing to find out some information as to whether it's worthwhile you doing it. If it's worthwhile you doing it, it is worth Googling some questions before you even think about talking to someone who's in the industry, right? Right? So don't pretend you're thinking about doing some side hustle. You're not. You think you're entitled to have this conversation right now? You're entitled as much you're entitled as much to ask me as I'm entitled as much to tell you to fuck off, right? If I feel like giving you the answers, sure. But if I don't feel like giving you the answers and saying, "Hey man, quite simply it's none of your business." In fact, to a certain point it's personal. If I want to tell you, I'll tell you. But I don't know you. I don't know you. This is the same person who pulls up on the side of the road to check their email, you know, because nothing is nothing in this whole town is as important as checking your emails right very fucking there and then, right? Dude, look at me. I get so passionate. What am I even upset about right now? It's not like I fucking, you know, people pulling up in their cars on the side of the road in fucking Halifax. It's hilarious. But man, I just feel like this entitlement has got to a point now where It's got to a point where it's unquestioned, you know, like kids are growing up with this fucking assumption that they can get away with things. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if I had ordered extra sauce on my burger when I was a kid at McDonald's, dad would have waited until I got to the table and said, bro, what the fuck is, what are you doing? Why? Why? You're making their job hard. You're making us look like idiots. You're holding up the people behind you. But you know what the reality is? Like, I thought about this this morning. I went and fueled up my car. The reality behind, like... I'm one of those people that if I'm in the line at fucking, uh, you know, if I'm in the line at uh, like Woolies or something where they've got the self-serve checkouts and I can see that like it's hell busy and there's like 15 people in line behind me sort of thing and I just had to wait 10, 12 minutes to get a fucking, to get a, what do you call it? A fucking, a, a checkout. I'm the sort of person that like, politely tries to bloody get everything through that checkout as quick as possible. Don't dilly dally around. Don't fucking have a conversation or the rest. You're there to check out your shit. You know what I mean? So I'll try and check it all out as quick as possible. Get out of the way. And then like, even to the point, like when you're walking out the door, I'm like, right, even if I've got to take a slightly longer version to get out of the door, that might take me a bit of extra time, but it means I'm not going to get in, get in the way of the mother with two kids who's trying to get all of this shit done in the self-serve checkout line. Probably should have gone to just one of the checkout chicks, whatever. If I can make her life a little bit easier by not going like, um, excuse me, can I get through here? Because it's my fucking God-given right to walk wherever I want. I drive a 200 series Land Cruiser, get the fuck out of my way, right? Instead, I can just walk around that little bit extra so that not not even necessary that wasn't for the lady with the kids at the checkout and that wasn't for the person in the line who's waiting for me to finish it's for the whole fucking collective it's for everybody in that room agreeing that we're all trying to achieve the same thing right we're all trying to get home we're all trying to cook dinner we're all trying to get through the checkout we're all trying to get our shopping you know what i mean we're all trying to find the savings we're all trying to get to our car that's the fucking point but the thing is people I'm finding live their life like this. And they're like, I'm trying to get home as quickly as possible and everybody else is fucking slow. They're doing it just so that I can get home slower. They're not doing it because of any other reason, but they hate me. That's what everyone's doing now, you know? And like, I saw today that someone pulled up behind me as I'm getting fuel and I'm like trying to get in my car and fucking start it all up and get out of the way to the point where like, stupidly, foolishly, I'm the person who like just jumps in the car and gets going. I'm like, I don't, to the point, I'll, 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 put, I'll turn my lights on when I get to the fucking next thing. I'll put my seatbelt on later. I'll put my wallet back in my bag instead of in my pocket. I'll put my phone up on the mount. I'll do all of that shit once I'm out of this person's way because they're waiting in line for fuel. And if I was waiting behind this person and they, dude, hey, everyone's seen this, you know, they walk back from the fucking, they walk back from the, from inside where they pay for the fuel. 
And then they get to their car and they're like searching for their keys in their pocket. And then they're like, oh wait, it's in the other pocket. And then they're like, oh no, it's in the other pocket. And then they go, oh, it was already unlocked. And then you see them and they fucking open the car door up and then they, then they fucking swing one leg in. Then they sit there for a bit and they get some more shit out of their pocket. And then they fucking, wait, my receipt, uh, they receipt, read the receipt for a bit and they're like, oh, oh yeah, okay, and then get in there. And then like, everyone's been through this by the way. And then they'll sit there and the doors open for a bit. And you've seen the keys haven't gone the ignition. You've seen that they're still fucking around with some other shit and you're just like, it's okay, I'm calm. Everything's fine, All right? That tire bat that I've got in the back seat, that tire bat that I've got in the back seat, I'm gonna save that for checking tires, okay? I'm not gonna use it on this person because I can see they're already struggling with life enough and I would hate to slow them down anymore, right? And then they shut the door and then you see the brake lights come on and then you hear the car turn on and it sits there for another, what seems to be fucking 30 seconds, but it's only like eight seconds. And then and you hear it, look, look, oh, it's in gear. And then you see that brake light come off and they slowly move out. And you're like, hey man, hey man, I hope everything's all good in your life because everything's all good back here. You know what I mean? You just taught me the lesson that I've got to slow down. You taught me the lesson that I can white knuckle my way through this 30 seconds or I can just teach myself to relax and appreciate that everyone's on a path of their own, right? Everyone has had that experience with a fucking idiot who doesn't have any comprehension for anyone other than themselves in whatever situation that they're in. And it, this is the thing, you have to remember how you do anything is how you do everything. I know that if that's how you get in your car at the servo, I know you're the sort of person who slows down and stops at roundabout zip lanes, but then also is the person who doesn't stop at stop signs because you actually think that you're bigger than the law. You think you're bigger than everyone else's expectations or needs. You are, and this is the thing, like people go like, no, 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 they're just inwardly focused and they're selfish people and all the rest. No, 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 no. This goes beyond just being fucking selfish. This is you think the rules don't apply to you. This is you think that even though you need to park your car, you don't need to go to a car park. You can just pull over where you are and as long as your fucking handbrake is on, then it's all good. This is the problem. We're fine. Like these are the people who come in and ask for a fucking. Oh, can I get a double quarter pounder and I'll get extra sauce and can I have it with no, no no buns, please? Can I just get the meat and the cheese and the lettuce just falling around in the fucking box? And can I get exactly seven hundred and fifty fucking more? Like, can I get exactly fucking thirty seven fries in my in my medium fries as well, please? And can I get a diet coke with no ice? And can I, can I get a large cup but only a mini amount of coke in there because I like to like feel it swishing? That's honestly how like fucking. Well, maybe it's not honestly because I don't know. I feel like that is how people are like negotiating the world around them. Like in their mind, it's not even about comfort or taste. It's just about how much they can fuck with the system and how much it doesn't apply to them. And please, please understand that I say this because I come from a place of doing that. I come from a place of being someone who thinks that the law doesn't apply to them, who thinks that the rules don't apply to them. I so genuinely... I don't understand. Like I, I always have seen this like click mentality. I've always seen this like, you know, oh, if you're with us, that doesn't really matter, you know, or like everyone else pays this amount, but you pay this amount because you're fucking one of the fellows sort of things. Like the reality is, is that doesn't really exist, right? And where that does exist, the public and the general community are most of the time not involved or don't know about it, right? And... The crazy part is, is everybody's living like they're the main character in the movie of the, uh, of the world, but they're not. They don't appreciate that they're just one in eight billion people, one in eight billion people. And the way that this is going to get better for everyone, and this, this is the part that really fucking hurts, is because you think that because that person is being so ignorant and negligent of these rules that we all have to live by, that maybe you don't have to do it either. And even if you started the day as a good person, it's so easy to finish the day as a bad person because why the fuck would you bother if no one else is bothering? And this is what turns easy days into difficult ones because you feel like you're losing a battle. Look at me right now. I came in super hot to record a podcast for fucking nobody yelling about the fact that people pull up on the side of the road. 
how the fuck am I meant to maintain? How the fuck after eight years am I not meant to create some sort of mentality in my head where I go, fuck these people. I'm just going to pull up wherever I want as well. You know what I mean? I'm in a big white four wheel drive. They'll fucking see where I am. If they hit me, it's on them. They should have seen me. I was pulled up. I was stopped moving. What do you expect? If a car's not moving, how about this? Don't run into it. How easy is it to make that argument? So, fuck man. I mean, I've had to teach myself. I had to get to a point where it's like, nah man, you are you are a number. You know, you're not anything special. And like, I mean, I, I on a kind of different note, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I struggle with, but I, I get confused understanding how people perceive me even now that I'm somewhat in the public space and I have quite a, I, you know, obviously I have an online persona and I have a certain amount of like, um, like a lot of people know me in Bunbury, I guess. Not a lot of people, but a reasonable amount of people. And it's like, sometimes I wonder, do people treat me differently because I have opinions and because I say things and put them online and because I am this sort of like up and coming talking head on the internet sort of thing. And it's weird, you know, like I even find like, you know, particular people, they shake my hand and say, oh, I need to, need to get in a photo with you and shake your hand before you blow up and forget who I am. And it's like, to me, don't forget to me. And this is really hard because like, I get it. You watch, you watch my YouTube, you listen to my Spotify, you listen to my podcast, you see all the stuff that I'm doing on my Instagram and all this. And it's really easy to disassociate my experience with yours. But the simple fact is it was only 10 minutes ago. I was driving trucks. It was only fucking 10 minutes ago that I had a car loan and that I was fucking renting a house and just like going through all the normal fucking procedures that you go through. And I was looking at the future with just absolutely question marks on top of my head. And to a certain point, I still do that. The only difference between me and you now is that I don't have a fucking guaranteed income. That is the only thing different. So I wonder like, do people see themselves and like, I think uh, we're 32 minutes into this, so I know the haters aren't going to listen this far, so I'll, I'll loosen my belt a little bit. I don't want to act like a celebrity, but I feel like a celebrity, right? And I know that celebrity is probably the wrong word, so just just hear me out. I think there's a certain amount of like, when I'm having these interactions, and I can feel people people are like looking up at you, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, but you're out there doing it and all the rest. It's like, if you haven't been in that situation, and I've been there a couple times, I've been there because... Uh, black ink when it was a coffee van people you know oh, you're the young bloke giving it a shot out there in business not just being a fucking tradie or you know not going to uni like you actually got a business of doing it I've had people look up to me when I was in skating obviously younger skaters and even the parents of other skaters going like fuck you know Jake's a good skater because I was I wasn't a fucking great performer but I was a good skater right and even in a certain light back when I was partying I felt like I don't know. I was always kind of everyone's go-to sort of person for for like whether it be I was always like the group daddy. You know what I mean? Like I'd always like keep be keeping an eye on things, and like I was always kind of like a year or two older than everyone. So people kind of like, oh well, if Jake's all chill, then I know it's nothing's too crazy. You know what I mean? So that kind of getting as I even saying the word celebrity and saying the words being looked up to, I don't like that perception. I don't want you to think like as I said, I'm not putting myself on a pedestal, but I'm definitely explaining what I was feeling and how I processed this situation of people kind of like going like, yeah, but, but you're doing it. You know what I mean? And for me, you know, the first thing that you want to do, there's this selfish, greedy, egotistical piece of shit inside of you goes like, yeah, well, what can I get out of this? You know what I mean? Like, well, what's the free stuff I can get? Can I get a discount? Can I get, can I get this, right? If you get ever get to this position and you tell me that you didn't have that greedy part of you pop its ugly head up and start saying those things, then I'm talking to a liar, okay? Because the reality is when you get to someone to be notable, the thing that determines your character is basically how much you can listen or not listen to that voice. It's your ability to navigate still being the same good person you were before you had any notoriety. It's being able to stay true to your character, right? So the thing that I find when I'm in these situations is like, dude, they're going to see my car pulled up on the side of the road with black ink plates on the back of it. They'll fucking move. They know I'm busy. They know I got shit going on. They see my podcast. They see my Instagram. They know. They've seen people wearing black ink around. They know. Well, look, fucking Street X, they know. Ooh. But um, <clears throat> it's, it's a thing where I have to battle that. I have to battle that voice, essentially, you know? And I think the part that annoys me the most, and again, I know I've said it a dozen times now, like I just... I, I, I feel like people have that voice for no reason. 
I feel like you are definitely entitled to have some entitlement when you earn it, when you've got something to show for it. And I think the most beautiful thing you can do with someone who has entitlement is not fucking use it. And the ugliest thing you can be is having entitlement for no fucking reason and no one backing it up. So in that moment when I drive past that car, right? When I drive past that car and it's parked up on the side of the road because they're checking their emails and there's a car behind me and there's a car in front of me and I even have to slow down a little bit because the car coming to it, like if I don't, we're all going to be, we're going to be too wide. Someone's going to run into each other. I think to myself, well, is this Mark McGowan? Is this Kanye West? Is this fucking, is this John Howard? Is this someone really important? Or is this someone who works in an office three kilometers away from here with a nine to five Monday to Friday job who plays cricket on Thursday nights? Who is this? Because they're parked on the side of the road, right? What are you doing? Like, wouldn't you rather be the person who is modest in their achievements and who is polite in their fucking advancements? You know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you be the person who's like, oh, but of course I, I mean, that's the thing. When that, when those, when the, when they came out, when I was parked in the car park today and they came out, I got out, shook hands, I'm smiling, what's going on? You know, rah, rah, rah. We had a chat for about 10 minutes. Louie's barking her, barking her head off. And we walk back out to the front car park and the bloke says, um, so what do you need? I said, oh, no, nothing. I've just had to reply to some messages. He goes, oh, so you don't need anything. I said, no, no, no. I just didn't want to park up on the road. I just, I saw your car park and I was like, I need to park my car. So I parked my car. He's like, yeah, no, 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 fair enough, fucking cool. You know what I mean? Like so much so to the point that like he would have had a moment somewhere today where he's thinking like Jake needed to pull up and he just pulled up in here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, fucking no. I'm not better than fucking pulling up in a car park when I need to park my car. And this is like, as I'm saying it out loud, it kind of sounds kind of sounds stupid and weird, but I feel like I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've talked, maybe I have built this up in my mind so much that it's a fucking, it's snowballing now every time that I see it because that first fucking... And that's a crazy part about being human, isn't it? That we have these things in our mind that we, how do you say it? We like, there's no regulatory person. There's no, there's no regulatory aspect of your mind where you think some bullshit and then it goes, hang on, no, 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 that's bullshit. Don't, don't, no, that's bullshit, right? The problem is, is like, because there's no regulatory thing, you have that thought and then it gets logged, right? So when I first saw that car pulled up on the side of the road eight years ago, I'm like, well, that guy's a fucking idiot. That's an idiot. You know, there wasn't the regulatory part of my brain going, hey, man, whoa, 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 pull that back in. Here's someone going through something. It's an emergency. He has to pull up. I'm sure there's a reason because no normal thinking person would pull up on the side of the road. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he is in a serious situation. Maybe he's just found out that his kid is sick or maybe he's found out that something crazy's happened at work and he's got to take it right there and then he doesn't have time to find a car park or doesn't even have the ability right now to mentally do that because he's seeing this happen is so crazy. And instead, the next time I see it, I'm like, look at this fucking idiot as well. He's just as bad as that fucking idiot the other day. Now we've got two idiots out here. And then the next time, and see, every time that log adds a layer. And all of a sudden, that one log that never got caught up in the start has now turned into yelling at people that you don't know over the internet in a podcast that you started for a completely fucking different reason. Right? The crazy part about our minds is, as we grow older, we're meant to be governing ourselves as we think we are meant to be our own regulatory service to make sure that as we have dumb thoughts we can go like whoa 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 whoa. don't worry about that don't worry about that or no that's not how that is or maybe let's give them the benefit of the doubt getting older you're meant to be the you're meant to be sharpening the sword of being able to not even reason in the favor of other people but just reason in the favor of common sense you know but yeah look fucking it is what it is I read this fucking uh, Instagram post the other day and it said, um, stay away from people who say it is what it is because they're the sorts of people who can't, who are just going to live by what happens around them and not make like effort to change, to change things to how they want things to be. Man, people will post fucking anything on Instagram, won't they? Like, I mean, I'll be very fucking honest. As I said in yesterday's podcast, I post things on Instagram to promote engagement so that more people learn about my brand and ultimately end up buying more shirts and jumpers and what have you. But I always stay on topic. 
I always stay on brand and I always stay contextual to the other shit that I posted. I don't, you know, start posting on Monday saying yellow is the best color. Yellow, nothing is ever going to be as good as yellow. And then on Friday, start posting like purple is the best. There is nothing better than purple. I wish I could think of something even close, but purple is the ultimate color. I've never said anything different. That is it. You know what I mean? But like posting like don't hang around with people who say it is what it is because they're the sorts of people who can't change their their environment. It's just like, man, honestly, get a fucking hobby and don't have it be on Instagram. What are you doing? It's crazy. I tell you what, actually, it's 41 minutes, so we're just about run out of time. But I tell you what I did get today, and this is exciting, right? And you're listening to this on Friday, which means that I got this on Thursday, which means they're fucking ready to go, baby. I got the socks back in. So I've got the socks, which are... You ready? This is definitely going to be the screen grab for the thumbnail, by the way. So I got these socks. Look at them bad bitches. Oh, shit. And they say black ink on them. Oh, oh, is that the screen grab there? Look at the flexibility on the kid. Shit. So I've got those socks and I've also got them in white. I have fucking plenty of both pairs. And don't forget... The last time that I got socks in, they sold out in an hour and a half, and I released them at six o'clock on a Saturday morning. So I'm not going to be fucking around. I'm not going to be looking after anyone because everyone thinks they're your best friend when you've got something that's hot and selling heaps of. Let's close this power because apparently I'm at 20% for the fifth time today. So if you want to get a hold of these socks and you see that they're available online, do not fuck around. Get onto them straight away. And please do me a favor. I was going to say don't buy six pairs at once because that's what it seems to be everyone does. They buy like three or six pairs at once. I was going to say don't do that. Fuck everyone else. Just do it. I want to sell these bitches out again. I want a, I want a reason to get another fucking box of socks in, you know? So do it. If you want to get some for your friends and family and your mum and all the rest, as I say, do something nice for your mum. Get her some fucking black ink socks. Get them for Christmas and, and give them to her early. And then at Christmas, get her some fucking more socks. You know what I mean? Just, who cares? Do it. Help out your boy, you know? I tell you what, I um, I got puff lifting my legs up above my head. Whew. Oh, I did it again this morning, by the way. I went for, so I had to get my rear wheel changed on my Harley because someone's been doing burnouts on my Harley. When I find the bastard, I'm going to be very upset with him. But, <clears throat> or her. Hey, girls can ride Harleys too, you know? <laughs> Pointless argument. Um... But yeah, I had to get my um, rear tire changed. And I, uh, the bloke who I bought the tire off couldn't do it till next week. So I was like, fuck, I kind of want to go for a ride this Sunday because my old boy's going on some, I think it's a, one of the hog group rides. If, if, if you know, you know. But um, I, uh, wanted to, I really wanted to get this bloody tire, uh, tire changed. And I've already got the tire. So I ended up going to the actual Harley shop in town and said, oh, can you do it? They're like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, we'll do it this afternoon. We're just servicing. How's this? They're like, oh. We're just servicing a bike this morning though, so it'll have to be after that bike. I was like, what bike is it? And they said what it was. I'm like, that's my dad's bike. You're servicing my dad's bike. How crazy is that? The day that I go in there, the bike that they're servicing is my dad's bike, and then they're changing my tire on the back of it, and none of that was organized. It's fucking crazy. So, <clears throat> and obviously, um, Riz has got work today. So we fucking, we ended up, uh, what we do? What do we do? Oh, yeah. So that meant that I had to get the bike there by myself, which isn't hard. It's just obviously getting home. So I've gone there, sussed it out, and they said they can do it. Then I've taken, because I had my push bike in the back, because I had it all planned out. I've taken my push bike at the back to the bike shop, two doors down, Fitzroy Cycles, which fucking little unsponsored plug here, by the way. Fitzroy Cycles is the best push bike shop to go to in this town, in my opinion. I've been going there for years. I speak directly with Keaton, who is one of the bike mechanics at the back, and he goes above and beyond to make sure that all of my cycling needs are met. If you need anything to do with push bikes, maybe you need a push bike service, you need a new push bike, you need some information, anything. They're the guys to go speak to in town. I have a lot of time for Mellow Velo, uh, uh, Mellow Velo, who's in the main street as well. They do great coffee. I think they're more of a cafe than a than a bike shop. Obviously, they are a bike shop as well. But my go-to is Fitzroy Cycles. Just in case anyone's wondering, and obviously the majority of people who don't live in Bunbury, this is completely fucking useless information. I'd like to thank you for your time to listen to it anyway. So, I take my push bike to Fitzroy's. I go see Keith and I say, "Hey, man, I'm going to be 10, 15 minutes." I'm going to come back because I need to go home, grab my Harley, drop it off, and I need my push bike to ride home. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, So I drop my push bike off there. I go home, grab my Harley, take it down, drop it off, grab my push bike, and I'm like, sweet. You know, my days are fucking jam-packed full of shit. So it's like, I've got to get home, keep doing the next thing. 
So instead, when I pull out of the push bike shop Fitzroy Cycles, instead of going left to head towards home, your boy turns right, right? And if I'm honest, do you want to know why I did that? Dude, this is being a boy, right? So when I was on my Harley and I was coming up to the Harley shop, I'd given it like, I don't know, I was, and obviously for entertainment purposes, none of this is true. I'm just telling you a story that I'm making up as I go along. But I pulled out of the lights heading towards the Harley shop and like fed it into it first, second, third. So I'm probably doing like 100, 110. And it's like a fucking 50 zone or a 60 zone. And like come up to the Harley shop just with way too much fucking speed. And just like, I didn't, I didn't skid at all, but my brake pads are fucked and the tires absolutely wrecked. So it was like kind of, it was a bit dodgy, but I've like <clears throat> kind of pushed it to one side, jumped on the front brake and like slowed it up in a hurry. And outside, the, out the front of the Harley shop is about six blokes on Harleys. And it's a Harley KTM shop. So to see that many blokes on Harleys out the front is pretty unnatural. And from my years of riding Harleys, I could pick what sort of blokes these were. You know, they were the sort of blokes that um, I think most of them bought their bikes in the past five years. And before that, they probably either didn't ride motorbikes at all or they grew up riding, you know, farm bikes or something. But in reality, like they're not, I'm not going to say they're not Harley riders because, you know, they definitely own Harleys and they've probably done some trips on them before or whatever. But they're not, they're not riders. You know what I mean? They're not ride life riders. They don't fucking... They don't live and breathe the shit. They don't know the majority of the shit about their motorbike. And they're definitely the sort of bloke that starts to talk about like, yeah, nah, well, I actually steer out of the corner when I'm going around corners. When they get to the pub, they talk about shit like they know they know what they're talking about. And it's like, yeah, cool, man. I just go around the fucking corner as quick as I can. That's all that matters, right? So when I pulled up, I could see them kind of giving me the look like, look at this young cunt wearing shorts and his fucking tattoos hanging out and his long hair and probably thinks he's all that. Cause yeah, I do think I'm all that because I've been riding Harleys forever, probably longer than you. All good. So when I leave the push bike shop, I look up the road and I see them still sitting out the front. I'm like, hmm, okay. Very subtle flex to be like, oh, not only can I ride the fuck out of a Harley, but check this out on a push bike. And I know what you're thinking. What, Jake, are you going to do a wheelie on the way past? Are you going to rip a mad skid on the way past? No. I'm going to ride past with my helmet firmly strapped to my head, both wheels on the ground, and not pay any attention to these dudes rolling past because for some reason, that gives me a rush of dopamine because I feel like I'm showing them something they didn't know. When in reality, they're paying no attention to me. They're not piecing two and two together that the same person who just rode up on the Harley is the same person going past on a push bike because they take themselves as seriously as what I take them myself and they're too worried about their shit to know that someone's riding past on a push bike. But that's the reason that I turn right instead of left. So now you know a little bit more about me kind of on a psychological level. Anyway. The problem is the Harley shop is ridiculously close to the Churchill. Now, if you listen to my podcast about writing my, you know, the Bad Motherfucker podcast, you know that Churchill sings my name out whenever I'm near it. So I ended up fucking going to the Churchill and just like completely cold, had not warmed up, no stretching, nothing. I've been running around like a blue ass fly all morning. And on top of that, I've had fucking two coffees and no food. So you kind of got that like jittery energy where you're like, yeah, I've got energy, but also don't talk to me after 2 p.m. today because I'm going to be in a bad mood. So I fucking bomb this hill. I go as hard as I possibly could. I got to the top. I can't breathe. Having that thing where you, you don't you don't get like, um, oh, I, I'm not sure if everyone gets this. It might just be uh, like when, when you push yourself really hard, you get like jittery vision. It's like almost, it's like not blurry or anything, but it's just jittery. It's like you're so tuned in, but at the same time, it's like your eyes can't focus on anything. They're just always kind of like, like flies wings almost. But yeah, so I fucking... Oh, I had a great time bombing the hill back down, went through the main street of town, posted a little story on my fucking feeds. Everyone knows I'm out living life, you know? But the whole point of that was just to tell you that I fucking sporadically rode up that church hill just because I was close to it, you know? And then bloody fought the wind the whole way home and kept on doing my thing. Dude, go buy some socks, okay? Jump on my website. Don't even go buy them. Just check them out for me, okay? Just check them out. And I'll tell you what. Here's another thing. You've made it 49 minutes into this episode with me, so let me tell you something. Let me tell you one of my goals for the end of the year. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers on YouTube before the end of the year, and I'm currently at 56. Now, I sat at 49 for about six weeks, and it broke my heart, and then I got over 50, and now I'm at 56. I've got the last, I think, three or four subscribers probably in the past two weeks. Now, with that trajectory, I'll probably find that I'll hit 100 by the end of the year, organically anyway, but what I am asking is for a little bit of your help. If you can do me a favor 
and just recommend this to one person. And by recommend, I mean tell them to go into their account on YouTube, log in, go to Black Ink Podcast, find me and subscribe. They don't need to watch a single fucking minute, okay? They can subscribe and not have the bell notification on so they never find out when I post anything. It's nothing. I don't even affect their homepage, but they give me a subscriber, right? I don't know what you're thinking. Like, man, isn't that just empty value though? Doesn't that mean that they don't, they're not really fucking tapped into what you're doing or care about what you're selling and all the rest? It doesn't matter. I just want that number to be a hundred, okay? That's all I want. And again, you can still say, say the same thing, but it's empty value, it's empty value. Fuck man, just do it, okay? Just do it. Nah. It's like I'm aiming for 1,600 followers on Instagram at the moment, and when I look at the people who are following me at the moment, like, I mean, my ideal follower right now is someone who lives within 300 kilometers of me that I might be able to meet in the next 12 months in an event or whatever it might be, or they're going to be around other people that are wearing black ink. So I can sell them black ink and I can get it to them really quickly. And they have some feeling of connection knowing that their thing that they bought was from a business established and maintained in the Southwest. And furthermore, the products that come out of this business are produced within the Southwest so that it's a real fucking like, I feel like I'm giving value to someone who appreciates value. And to be honest with you, they're not the followers I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of international followers. I'm getting a lot of other businesses following me. But at the same time, my plan is to get to 1600 followers. 1600 followers. It's not to get to 1600 followers of these one particular type of people. It's to get to 1600. Because once I've got to 1600, then I'm going to 1650 and 1700 or 2000, whatever it might be. And the whole point of this YouTube thing right now is the hardest thing, all right? Stay with me. The hardest thing that you can do on social media, on any of the platforms, is get those first 100 subscribers on YouTube. Because if you're coming in without any sort of prior recognition, right? So it's not like I'm coming in where I've got, you know, 2,000 followers on this other YouTube page, or I've got 10,000 followers on on, uh, Instagram, or maybe I've got fucking half a million followers on TikTok, like... I've got 1,300 follows on Facebook, Black Ink, which, by the way, gets fucking two likes on any of the posts that I put up. I've got 1,560 followers on Instagram, and I've got, you know, maybe 800 on TikTok. Like, I'm literally on the bones of my ass when it comes to an engagement, not engagement when it comes to a direct audience. So getting these first 100 followers, especially when your content is 45 minutes long and it's just you talking about bullshit to a screen, it's super hard to get. But once you get over that 100, then shit starts to get a bit easier. So I, I ask you politely, please. Recommend this for me to just one person. And if you aren't already subscribed, maybe you listen to this on Spotify or iTunes, please jump on YouTube. If you don't have an account, create one, subscribe to me and then set and forget the fuck about it. Okay, because it does so much for me and it is for free. Anyway, that is all I have to say today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for joining me. This has been the episode number 53. Who knows what it's going to be called. It'll be something cool, though. And with that fucking funny uh, thumbnail with my feet up in the air. Dude, that's what it's about. Anyway, have a lovely day. Be good to your mother because I'm fucking out. Yeah!